Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So my name is Yvonne Sepulveda. For those of you that don't know me, um, I'm the Marysville Tulalip Chamber of Commerce President CEO, and I'd like to welcome you all this morning to our Business Before Hours. Um, if we can um, please welcome all the elected officials in the, in the room today, um, if you can hold your applause till the very end. Um, officials, if you can please um, wave or stand. So we've got Mayor John Nearing, Steve Moeller, City Council, Marysville, Mark James, Marysville City Council, Camille Norton, Marysville City Council. From Tulalip Tribes today, we have Mal Sheldon, Tribal Board Member. And then Snohomish County elected officials, we've got Nate Nearing, Snohomish County Council, and Sid Logan from Snohomish County PUD. Can we give them all a round of applause? Um, I'd also like to acknowledge all the board members of the chamber that are here today. Um, if, again, if you can please hold your applause. Um, board members, if you can please wave. We've got um, chair of the board, JJ Frank, treasurer, Martin Napayahi, vice chair, Tony Matthews, Todd Fallman, Felicia Kreider, Tracy Goldsby, and Kevin Daniels. Can we give them all a round of applause? Now I'd like to introduce our breakfast, or our business before hours sponsor, Rick McCarthy from McCarthy General Contractor to the stage. Am I wireless? Do we got wireless? Um, you had it on the stage. I don't know where you put it. Oh, right here. He, he could use that one on the ground. Ah, oh, there it is. Check, check. Oh, we're on. Hey, look, a baby's up there. Isn't that the cutest baby you ever seen? That's little baby Theo. That's my buddy's baby, and I figured I'd just put that up there to get everybody's attention. Today I'm here to talk about, not about my business, but I'm here to talk about community service. And I want to talk about what it's done for my company, what it's done for me as a person. I'm not religious, I don't go to church or anything like that. So I couldn't really find a way to give or be a part of the community. Um, Chamber is actually the beginning of uh, my journey of helping the community and being a part of it. And then Rotary popped into the picture for me and really revved things up great for me. Everybody knows that gal right there is Renee James taking a selfie. Have you guys ever wondered what it looks like when someone's taking a selfie? It looks like that. <laughs> Where are you at, Mark? Oh, Mark's not in here. We're having fun. Um, you know, some of the things we did with Rotary, we did, we did some pretty crazy stuff, but uh, I challenged Arlington Rotary once. Uh, for the food bank, a uh, thousand boxes of cereal, and we nailed it. So with uh, the help of Rotary and competing with the other city, we actually got a thousand boxes of cereal for the food bank. And there's Arlington Rotary and my cheesy smile. Let's get right off of that one quick. Boy Scouts, we built uh, cabins for the Boy Scouts of America. Obviously, we're not done yet in that picture. Had a pretty good crew out there, lots of people working, got that done. There's that little pavilion that was in Comfort Park. Uh, brought our crane out there, systematically took it apart. We're going to re-erect that thing at Rainier Vista, a new park that's uh, out on Sunnyside Boulevard. If you haven't visited it, it's right behind Strands Boulevard Grocery. It's awesome. You look around town, you just randomly see rotary stuff everywhere. And uh, that's a four-way test of what uh, the things we think, say, and do. And it's just a great set of guidelines to kind of even live by. So. Just a little something in there for you guys, more random rotary stuff. Connecting with the school resource officers, um, helping out at the school, early, inter, uh, early prevention with kids and stuff like that. It's just a great thing to do. Scholarships, rotary gives hundreds of thousands of dollars to scholarships and uh, helps out with the kids as well. So very, very worthy stuff. There's a couple leaders right there. We got Harv and Larry Juby. You guys probably know those guys. I mean, they're, uh, they're everywhere. Larry's doing a little donation or a little uh, work at the food bank. 
So is Harv in that picture. And if you guys know Ron Young, you got to keep your eye out for that guy. Oh, this is my contractor. If you guys need any help with your electrical, shoot me a call. I know how to turn it off. I was very uh, fortunate to be a part of the Special Olympics Polar Plunge. Where's our chief? There he is right there. Uh, thank you so much for that. It was, a, uh, it was amazing. It was great. And I really appreciate all you did for us on that one. So there's the original picture. I tried to run it through Snapchat and a filter. It didn't work. So uh, Rotary actually brought me down to uh, Louisiana to clean up after Hurricane Ida as well. Uh, the devastation down there was nothing like I'd ever seen in my life. Uh, 175 mile an hour sustained winds, 210 mile an hour gusts, and it just blew everything down. Every light pole was at an angle like that. It was incredible. Houses just decimated. But uh, we were able to put a pretty good team together of guys. We went down there and uh, cleaned it up. I love my sunsets, by the way. That's, uh, that's what I got to see. That trailer got blown about 100 feet, carried up over the top, and landed on that little island. That's how bad those winds were. If it had touched the water at any point, it probably would have sunk because that back door's open. Isn't that incredible? So there's a team and I kind of coming up with a plan on how to fix a large building, checking out our prints and uh, getting things taken care of. Guatemala, I just got back from Guatemala. I uh, did a school build with Rotary down there. Very, very, very powerful uh, situation. It was great. I've chose Guatemala to do my school builds in because it's not a hostile country. So our efforts and what we put into that stay put. And we train the villagers to continue to maintain the water system, the uh, fresh water catchment, and to uh, maintain the school. So it's a real eye-opener when you get down there of uh, what it is and how good we have it here. But uh, the villagers, man, those guys, they just get going. I mean, they get going on it hard. Kelly Peterson, a lot of you guys know him, a uh, veteran out there. He's built quite a few schools, worked real hard. Cool, uh, cool sunset, got the moon upside down. That's Guatemala as well. Went the extra mile for the kids. We gave away 3,000 pieces of gum. They called, me, they called me El Capitan Chicle, which is, oh, okay, we got some people that know. Yeah, Captain Gum. And there you go. Every school I do, I always write a little something there, and Capitan Chicle was here. Um, to go build a school in Guatemala, it didn't take very much to do at all. Um, as you can see, we've got a teenage girl running a, um, a nail gun. So you don't really have to have construction knowledge to go down there and actually build a school. This is the hardware store, big selection. That is the entire paint department, hardware. And that is the school finished, 100% done. That's the inside. That's uh, quite a bit of the build team, not quite all everybody, but uh, you got Larry Juby in the back. Larry's pounding in a couple of the last nails, getting those trusses set. We got the school done early, so we decided to go out and play. And that looks like a Las Vegas resort, but that's actually Mother Nature right there. Uh, that moment was incredible. Nothing like I'd ever seen in my life. And that wraps it up, guys, nice and speedy. But I just wanted to share with you guys what community service has done for me. And can I get a show of hands of anybody that is involved in community service of some sort, whether it be chamber? Look at this. What a crowd. Hey, I know that guy. What's up, Stefan? Um, no, it, it's great, though. So thank you so much, everybody, for watching. And uh, I'm glad that I didn't go after you, Nate, because you're a heck of an act to follow. So thank you, everybody. All right, can we give Rick another round of applause? Now I'd like to introduce our guest speaker for the morning. Nate Nearing is a Snohomish County Council member representing the communities of Marysville, Arlington, Stanwood, Granite Falls, and Darrington. His priorities include fiscal responsibility, public safety, and growing jobs in Snohomish County. Council member Nearing is a strong advocate of bipartisanship and working across the aisles to get things done for Snohomish County residents. Nate and his wife, Savannah, were both born and raised in Marysville, and they currently live in Arlington, where they are raising their three young children. Can we all give a round of applause for Nate?
Well, thank you, Yvonne. I really appreciate that introduction. And, you know, this is one of my favorite parts of my job is getting to come and speak at groups like the Marysville Toilet Chamber and get to talk about some of the great things that are happening throughout Snohomish County and particularly in our area here in North Snohomish County. And I think one of the reasons I'm so excited about our community is uh, what we just saw with Rick's presentation and uh, the volunteerism and all the great community service groups we have in our area. And so just feels like a blessing to live here. Uh, and I really appreciate that. Yvonne, is this what I'm using to move the PowerPoint? Yes. Let's see. You'd think because I'm young I can operate a PowerPoint, but I may be having some technical difficulty here. <laughs> Maybe I'm not using the right button. Just want to make sure it's on. Now we have some movement. Awesome. Uh, well, as Yvonne mentioned, I'm the District 1 County Council member, so I represent the northern part of Snohomish County. I've been on the council since 2017, so I'm uh, just now starting my second term on the county council. And my wife and I live uh, in Arlington with our three kids, and we just love living in Snohomish County, really enjoy this community. and. Uh, you know, in our, I think globally, we've got a lot of challenges happening right now, and nationally we've got some challenges, and here locally as well, but I'm really optimistic about our future, especially in Snohomish County. I think there's some great things happening and some great things coming down the line, and uh, so I'm excited to talk about both some of the challenges we face and some of the opportunities we have as a county here today. Um, I'm going to jump right into the PowerPoint. I'm going to throw a lot of information at you. If you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me and, and throw your hand up, and we can take questions as we go along. I'll also try to save some time at the end for questions as well. So jumping right in here, uh, the county budget is the first thing I wanted to touch on. So legislative bodies like the county council have two primary responsibilities. The first is to create or pass or change laws for county government, and the second is to adopt our annual budget. So for Snohomish County, we have a budget of about a billion dollars that we pass every year. The county council gets a recommended budget from our executive in September, and then we deliberate for a couple of months, have a robust public comment period before uh, passing a budget before Thanksgiving each year. And so here on the screen, you can see a breakdown of your property tax dollar. So for every dollar that you pay in property taxes, this is a, a general idea of how it gets broken down. You got about seven cents on the dollar that goes toward the county's general fund. And then you've got portions for different sorts of uh, taxing authorities, whether it be the state, schools, cities, fire districts, and a whole host of other junior taxing districts. So adopted, or adopted uh, budget highlights for 2022. This is the budget for this year that we passed last November. One of the things that we've tried really hard to do has been a priority for several of us at county government is to stretch your tax dollar as far as it can go. And so the first four years that, uh, that I was on the county council, we consistently passed balanced budgets with no property tax increases to the general levy. And you might be thinking, well, it doesn't feel like that. You know, I've been getting my property tax bill and it, it continues to rise. And part of the reason for that is, as you saw on the last slide, there's a whole host of different entities that, um, that can raise or, or lower taxes. And so all that goes into your, your uh, property tax bill makeup. This past year, however, a majority of the council did decide to take a 2.5% property tax increase. So that was on a 3 to 2 vote. One of the priorities for this last year's budget was public safety and human services. And so you can see on the screen there, we uh, funded some additional sheriff deputies. And then body-worn cameras was one of the big ticket items in our budget. This is something that I think just about all local governments, cities and counties are moving toward. It's something that has broad public support and also has broad support within the law enforcement community. And so we're excited to, uh, to equip our deputies in Snohomish County with body-worn cameras. Um, I'm a budget nerd, and so some may not be interested in this, but we have a really cool tool. I think it's cool. Um, on our website, on our county council webpage, called an online budget tool. This is something we put together a couple of years ago uh, just to try to increase transparency with our budget. So if you're interested, if you want to nerd out on, uh, on our revenues and expenditures, you can go to our page and you can play around with this interactive tool that allows you to go through the different revenue sources for how money comes into county government and also the expenditures. And you can see in pretty good detail by department and by program how your tax dollars are spent at the county level. So COVID has been uh, you know, the elephant in the room for a lot of us, and especially in government at all levels. It's been the, the um, primary focus for the last couple of years. And I know I'm grateful that we're uh, finally coming out of that and getting to focus on some other priorities. But 
One of the things that we have left to do um, on this is dealing with some of the federal relief funds that have come in from the, from the federal level. So there's been a significant investment from the federal government into sending COVID relief funds down to the local level to the tune of about $200 million to Snohomish County government alone, which is a huge amount of money. Um, under the CARES Act, which was signed into law by President Trump, I think that sent about $40 million to the county. And then more recently, the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, signed by President Biden, has sent $160 million. So $80 million came into the county last year for COVID relief. And you can see on the screen some of the items that that was spent on, including the public health response, economic recovery, so our support for our small businesses uh, while the restrictions were in place and, and folks were struggling and then social services as well. So those are things like rent, relief, utility, health, and those sorts of things. Well, the way that it was passed, we had the first tranche, the 80 million last year, but we have the second 80 million. Uh, the second half of it is actually coming in just a few weeks here. So later in May, we'll be receiving that second half from the Federal Department of the Treasury. And one of the things that's really important to me, and I think I can speak for, for all of our county uh, representatives when I say this, it's really important that when, you know, this is a once in a lifetime investment of funds, it's a significant amount of money. We wanna make sure that it's not wasted, right? These are your tax dollars that go into the federal level coming back. And so one way that we could do it is just have a bunch of politicians dream up some ideas for how we can get this money out the door. But I think the right thing to do and what we wanna do is make sure that we're listening to the community, listening to business owners and community organizations and the public in general on what the greatest needs are and so that we can make sure that these funds are being used as, uh, as effectively as possible to, to benefit our communities. And so one ask I would have today is if you, uh, whether as a business owner or a community leader or just as a citizen, if you've got thoughts or ideas on how some of these funds should be spent to benefit our community, I'd really encourage you to reach out to me. I'll have my contact information on a later slide here. Uh, but we really do want to get a lot of public input and make sure that these funds are, are spent as effectively as possible. So the Economic and Workforce Recovery Task Force is something that I formed with uh, County Executive Dave Summers when the pandemic began. Um, and it's the same sort of idea that I just talked about. You know, when, when the restrictions were put in place, we had a lot of businesses that were struggling. There's a lot of businesses that unfortunately went out of business and haven't come back, um, but there were some significant struggles. And so as a government entity, we wanted to work to support our business community as much as we could help our businesses, help the workers, and help everything stay afloat for our local economy. And so we created this task force and brought on several local business leaders from North Snohomish County. In fact, I think we got some folks in the room here who are a part of that, and so I appreciate that. And uh, community organizations and others just to talk about what the needs are, what the concerns are, what the biggest hurdles are going through the pandemic. And we put together a, a report on findings and recommendations that you can find on the County Council website if you're interested in checking that out. Next is collaboration. Uh, so, you know, I've been in elected office for just about five years now, and one of the things I learned very quickly is the importance of partnerships and on collaborating with others. Um, I found very quickly that you don't get a whole lot done if you're trying to do things yourself. It's really important, whether it's going for state or federal dollars to try to bring back money for local projects in your community, or just trying to pass policy priorities, it's critical that you partner with others and, and work together to get the job done. It just makes things so much easier, and I think it's what our community expects. And so I'm really excited about a new uh, partnership that we formed as a county with four other counties in our, uh, in our region, in the Northwest region. It's called the SWISS Partnership. So the acronym SWISS stands for the five counties, Snohomish, Whatcom, Island, Skagit, and San Juan. And what we're doing is we're leveraging our resources and working together to go to the state level in Olympia, and to go to DC at the federal level to try to bring back as much of your tax dollars that are going to the state and federal government and bring them back here to our area for local projects. And so we've identified three common goals as a five county region and those include behavioral health investments, rural broadband access, and then transportation uh, for our area. And so I'm really excited about this effort. It's one of many examples of good partnerships that we have and, uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to see what comes of that. So another example of partnership, and this was recently announced, um, is the Strawberry Fields Project. This is something I'm very excited about. It's a $1.7 million investment into the Strawberry Fields Complex uh, to, to convert one of the fields to turf. It'll add bleachers in, it'll add a new playground, and then also make improvements to the uh, off-leash dog park and the trail. So there's a few reasons I'm excited about this. First of all, 
It's a, like I talked about, it's a cool partnership. We've got a million dollars coming in from the Snohomish County, half a million from the city, and then we also had Amazon come in with a $140,000 contribution to fund the playground equipment. But the other thing that's unique about this project is it serves several different user groups. So a lot of times when we talk about park projects, uh, usually they'll go toward you know, one user group, maybe two, but this is cool because you know, if you're a soccer player, or a lacrosse player, or a football player, or just want to get out on the field for fun, you'll have that new turf field which is gonna be great and it'll be publicly accessible. Um, if you've got children, we'll have that new playground. Uh, there aren't many in the northern part of the city in this area of the county, and so I'm excited about that. And then the off-leash dog park is extremely popular, as I'm sure uh, several of you know, and so we've got some great improvements coming there. So this is slated to uh, get underway next year, and uh, very excited to see that uh, done shortly. Here are some other investments in North County. I'm not gonna go through each of these, but you can see them on the screen here. One I will touch on is Kayak Point Park. I know uh, our family loves to go out to Kayak Point during the summertime. It's a beautiful park, and uh, that's going to get some significant upgrades there with a $2.6 million investment. Um, so excited about some of these projects going on. The SR 530 Memorial, that's the Oso Slide Memorial, and we've now completed the funding required to complete that uh, memorial. That'll be done in a couple of years. And then Whiteport Park is going to get some campground improvements out in the Darrington area. Oops. Here's some capital investments. Again, I won't go through each of these, but uh, just for your information, some big ticket items for some capital investments in our county government. Broadband is something that, uh, that I've been very passionate about over the past couple of years, and really it's been, the need for broadband has been highlighted by the pandemic. So when the pandemic hit, it was kind of like, uh, you know, a switch was flipped, and all of a sudden you had kids who were having to learn from home and do school remotely. You had lots of adults, probably many of us in the room, who are having to work from home and, uh, and do that remotely. And lots of other services as well, like telemedicine and other things, all had to be done uh, remotely using the internet. And that's all good and well if you've got reliable internet access, you know, if you live in a, in a city and you can rely on that. But imagine being a student out in Darrington with no internet, or very spotty internet access, and not being able to do your schoolwork. And we have many of these areas throughout Snohomish County where uh, there just isn't reliable internet access. And so, as a result of this being highlighted as a, as a critical issue, there's a lot of federal funding that's gone into broadband access, a lot of state funding as well in Olympia. And so at the county level, I worked with uh, Councilmember Lowe and Executive Summers, and we thought, gee, there's all this money that's going to be coming down the pike. We want to make sure that we're ready with projects for our community so that we can bring some of these funds back home for, um, for, our, you know, for our kids and for our uh, adults who are working from home and those sorts of things. And so we formed what's called a broadband action team and we brought together stakeholders, uh, school districts, Snow Isle libraries, um, private service providers like Comcast, Wave, and Zipli, and a whole host of others who have an interest in expanding internet access with the goal of, you know, eventually, I think the long-term goal is to have every household have reliable access in the county. And we've worked very closely with the State Department of Commerce. The first grant round that was available, we, oops, we did submit a grant application through the State Department of Commerce. Um, and this application was for the SR530 corridor, so from Arlington to Darrington along 530, including the town of Darrington, to serve about 6,000 homes with internet access. We partnered with Zipli Fiber on this. And uh, we're very excited to get the result. Earlier this year, we found out we placed number one in the entire state for that grant application. And that was a testament to the great work of this broadband action team and the staff that worked on putting that application together. And so we're very excited about this. It's an $18 million investment into our community, which is huge. That's a, that's a big dollar amount. The total project is $28 million. So you've got the $18 million grant from the State Department of Commerce. And then Zipley Fiber is also privately contributing uh, $10 million through that public-private partnership. On the same uh, note on broadband, as a county, we're also investing in this. So with those American Rescue Plan Act fun, uh, funds that I talked about earlier, there's some restrictions around how those can be used. Um, but one of the things that are spelled out is it can be used for broadband. And so we put uh, $5 million of that, and I would anticipate some more funds being put into that in this second round. And the idea there is to fill some of the gaps in our community that, um, that are not being filled by private service providers. And so we'll use some of those funds for that purpose. So moving on with economic development, Payne Field is one of my favorite uh, things that have happened in the past several years with commercial air service. Can I get a show of hands if you've flown out of Payne Field? All right, that's what I like to see. We've got a lot of hands there. And what'd you think of it? Very good. That's been my experience, too. I've had the chance to fly out a couple of times from Payne Field, and uh, it's just an incredible experience. 
And it's really unique. Um, it's one of a kind in the entire country for a couple of reasons. So the land itself at the airport is, is county-owned land. But rather than trying to operate an airport ourselves and, and do commercial air ourselves like a lot of others do, we actually formed a public-private partnership with Propeller uh, Airports, which is a private entity. They came in, uh, leased the terminal from the county, and they brought $40 million of private investment to build that into the beautiful facility that it is. And uh, it's been recognized with statewide national awards for excellence. I'm really proud of, uh, of what's happened there. We've got Alaska Air servicing it, which is, I think, one of the best airlines. And we've got some expanding routes coming. And so this is something I'm really excited about for the future of Snohomish County. It's good not just for folks like us in North County for passenger service, so we don't have to fight traffic down to SeaTac, but it's also great for economic development. It's a huge booster. I can't tell you how many uh, businesses I've spoken with, whether it's nationally or even internationally, who have said you have to have uh, passenger service and you have to have an airport to be taken seriously for, for economic development and bringing new sectors and good jobs into your community. And so this is something that's going to be a huge asset for years to come in Snohomish County. The Cascade Industrial Center, another great economic development uh, asset for our community here locally. So I'm sure most of you have heard about this before uh, for the past couple of years, but over 4,000 acres of manufacturing industrial land. Um, had the cities of Marysville and Arlington not designated this for jobs, it would likely be you know, lots of high-rise apartments right about now, um, which there's a need for housing. There's also a huge need for jobs and family wage jobs in our community. So I'm glad that we have uh, this land here that's available for us to bring new businesses and good jobs so that our folks can work close to where they live. Right now, 50% of folks who live in Snohomish County have to commute outside of the county for work. And so we want to make sure that we're bringing jobs here, that we're, um, we're friendly toward uh, business, and making sure that folks have the opportunity to work close to where they live if they want to. And the Cascade Industrial Center is a big part of that. I'll just highlight very quickly two uh, businesses. The first is Eviation in Arlington. Uh, has anybody heard of Eviation and the work they're doing? Got a couple of hands. So Eviation is building the world's first fully electric commuter aircraft. It's called Alice, and it's already gotten, I think, several orders. I think it has a test flight next month. But this is a really cool aircraft. I had the chance to go and tour Eviation, and uh, they're doing some great work there, some really innovative stuff. And so it's awesome to have that in our area here. And then another is Solly Organic in Marysville, which uh, I've got a tour scheduled to go check that out. But a, a ton of acreage there for, uh, for indoor uh, agriculture, and so that's going to be a really great business as well. This is something that's near and dear to my heart, and uh, if you've ever heard me speak, you've heard me talk about this before, so I apologize for going through it again, but I just think it's so cool. Um, one of the things we worked on a couple of years ago was, you know, we identified a big need, and that's uh, the lack of skilled workers coming in to fill some of our trades jobs, particularly in the construction trades. And you know, as a former teacher, what I've seen is that we've got some great pathways for kids to go toward two- and four-year colleges, which is awesome. But we're really lacking behind, not just here in, in our state, but nationally, I think. We've really turned a blind eye toward the trades. And it's to our detriment, right? Because we've got a lot of people in the construction industry who are retiring. We see now that construction costs are going up. There's a ton of construction happening. It's a booming industry. And we just don't have the qualified workers to come in and fill those jobs. And so one of the things that is really important, worked very closely with some of our local school, district, uh, school districts, including the Marysville School District, which has been a fantastic partner on this and some of our labor groups on bringing the skilled trades back into the high school and doing that hands-on training in the high schools to get kids excited about this as a potential career path. And so um, we started with that. It's called the Regional Apprenticeship Pathways Program. It is run out of Marysville uh, Pilchuck High School, but it's open to students countywide. It serves 50 students a year. And the way it works is if a student goes through and graduates from the program, they earn their high school diploma. They earn a college credential from Everett Community College that's been designed specifically for this program. And then they get either preferred or direct entry into a state certified apprenticeship program of their choice. So they get to go straight from graduating high school right into an apprenticeship and on the path to a successful career in the trades. And I think this is just such a cool opportunity for our kids to have multiple options post high school, whether it's college or the military or the trades or a whole host of others. Housing affordability is a big topic, and you know a lot of uh, the housing affordability discussion happens at the state level with some of the different regulations that are in place, but there are some things that we can be doing here locally to help with housing affordability. And one small but I think very positive step that we've been able to take in the past few months is on accessory dwelling units, or what are more commonly referred to as mother-in-law apartments. And um, so this is really cool. 
there's a lot of policies you know, that are driven by either staff or by politicians, and, uh, and that's all good and well, but what's really special is when you have some po policy and law changes that are, uh, that are driven by the public or by constituents, by people who really want to see a change, and that was the case here. I had a large group of uh, several dozen uh, homeowners who came to me and said, we really want to have the ability to build detached accessory dwelling units on our property. Um, and most of the time that was for an aging relative who, you know, they would rather have live on site with them, but not, not in the same home, right? Have a, have a separate property so that um, they didn't have to live in a home or in some other place. Or for a college student, you know, who's graduating from college but doesn't have a savings built up to, uh, to afford a down payment, which is becoming increasingly difficult in our area. And so anyway, there was a huge need and a desire from the community to see this happen, and we were able to work through and improve the flexibility so that now in unincorporated Snohomish County, detached accessory dwelling units can be built uh, uh, much easier. It's a much smoother process, and so I'm excited about that. And there's also some other legislation coming down with a missing middle ordinance, uh, development agreements, and then SEPA exemptions, all which were kind of set up at the state level, and we'll be one of the first communities to take advantage of that. Transportation, so this is another big one. Uh, I'll go through this kind of quickly. These, this is a Connecting Washington package, which is a 2015 transportation package, um, but it has some great investments in North Snohomish County to the tune of about $200 million. And so you can see some of the projects highlighted there. I'll just talk quickly about two of them. The first is happening pretty soon here. It's the SR 529 interchange. That's the brand new interchange that's gonna happen between Everett and Marysville, along with a new uh, lane on I-5. And then the second, a little further north, uh, the second dot from the top, is the 156th Street interchange. So right now, if you're driving north towards Smoky Point, you'll see an overpass at 156th Street. That's going to be converted into a full-fledged interchange, which will hopefully, hopefully alleviate some of the traffic on 172nd Street. And I say hopefully because I live right off of 172nd Street, and we could sure use that. More recently, uh, the state just last year passed the Move Ahead Washington package. It's another long-term transportation package, a $17 billion uh, package, and that had some good investments for North County as well. It backfilled some of the, um, some of the need for that SR-529 interchange, I think a $30 million backfill, and then also $5 million for the Grove Street overcrossing. That I, uh, I hopefully was going to happen in the next several years here. On the county side, we've been focusing on uh, several roads here. Two of the roads of significance are 67th from Marysville to Arlington and then 84th from Marysville out to the Granite Falls area. These are two roads that are high speed and we have a lot of collisions. There's some safety concerns and uh, thankfully we're, we're doing studies on both of those roads and I'm hoping to see some county investment in those areas in the near future here. Oops. So homelessness and the opioid epidemic. This is one of the biggest issues that I hear about when I go out and, uh, and talk with folks, whether it's business owners or talking with people at their homes. Uh, this is something that's a huge concern, not just in our county, but in, our, in I think our entire state. And uh, I think everybody here is probably familiar with the Embedded Social Worker Program by now that the cities of Marysville and Arlington have been working on, a great program that I'm really proud of. For those who don't know, it partners up law enforcement with social workers, and they go out into homeless encampments in other areas and work to get folks connected with services they need, whether that's detox, uh, treatment, housing, job training, you name it and work to get folks back onto their feet and into a healthy and sustainable lifestyle. And it's seen some great early success. And I've heard some awesome stories from folks who have been through this program, uh, you know, who without this program, if they had been left on the street to, you know, to battle a heroin addiction, they could potentially have lost their lives by now. But thanks to work from our social workers and police officers on this, they've gotten into treatment. They're now sober, reunited with their families, into a, a job and a sustainable lifestyle. And so this is really cool. This is one of my, my favorite things that I've seen happen here locally. Some other efforts. As a county, we've been investing heavily in uh, behavioral health and treatment beds, whether that's the Carnegie Resource Center in downtown Everett. We recently converted two wings of the Denny Juvenile Justice Center to two 16-bed treatment facilities and uh, the Jail Diversion Center and a whole host of others. And so we've been working as hard as we can to add beds so that when folks are willing to take that step to get help, we've got uh, space available for them. And there's lots of work to be done there. Um, we hope to continue doing that. So nuisance properties is something that uh, I've been working on a little bit. Is anybody familiar with the Larson Road property out in the Sylvana area? Yeah, Rick is. I know we've talked about it. So this is a, it's a huge eyesore. It was a huge eyesore. I would say the, the biggest nuisance issue in the entire county I had the chance to go several times with our law enforcement and our health district and our code enforcement teams to this property and you know dozens of squatters, 
uh, feces everywhere, needles, trash covering the ground where you can't even see the ground, um, vehicles everywhere that have been broken into. And so this is what happens sometimes when uh, a property falls into foreclosure, a bank takes over and just kind of leaves it vacant. You have squatters come in and, and there's criminal activity happening, prostitution, drugs, all sorts of things. And so it was a huge um, issue for the neighboring community, as you can imagine. And so we went in, and thanks to some of the great work from our sheriff's office, from our health district, and then from our county's code enforcement team, we're able to work to get that cleaned up. And it was a very lengthy process, unfortunately, due to a lot of uh, federal restrictions. It takes a long time to get these cleaned up. And I, this before and after picture doesn't quite do it justice. Those are the best ones I had. But um, uh, all cleaned up. The house is being fixed. There's no more vehicles. All the trash is gone. And so um, this is some good work. And we've got several of these properties throughout the county. So if you have one in your area or in your neighborhood, please let me know and we want to work on making sure we get those addressed and working with several partners who, uh, who are doing that work to, to get help there. Uh-oh. So most of my presentation today has been about uh, good stuff that's happening in the community. And, uh, and that's, you know, I, like I said at the beginning, I'm very optimistic about some of the things that are happening, but I, I have to mention this in the presentation, something that I think is going to be a significant challenge for us in the future, and that's public safety concerns. I've uh, had a lot of meetings recently with our sheriff, with other law enforcement agencies, and with our deputies, and I'll tell you, I'm very concerned about the state of public safety, not just in Snohomish County, but in, in, in our entire state. We're facing a staffing crisis in public safety that, um, that I don't think has been seen before, and there's several contributing reasons to that. We've got rising crime rates. We've got state legislation that's made it very difficult for police officers to do their jobs effectively. And, uh, and it's, we're not a very friendly, as a state, I think, we're not a very police-friendly state. And so, you know, I've talked with our uh, Snohomish County Sheriff's Office. We have a lot of deputies that have left to go work in other states like Idaho, Montana, Arizona. We've got a lot of folks who have uh, retired early and a lot who have just quit the profession entirely and sought career changes. And this is a big problem. When I had a recent conversation with our deputy team, I was told that we're almost constantly operating on what's called level two um, service, which essentially means if you go home from the chamber meeting today and you find that your home was broken into uh, and you call the police, unless somebody is actively on site and is an imminent threat to you, uh, you'll probably be told to call back later or to expect somebody in several hours. And as you can imagine, you know, if you haven't had a crime like that happen to you before, that would be traumatizing, right? To come home to something like that and then be told help's not coming, you know, for at least several more hours. And that's not the fault of our police. It's a staffing issue that's been caused by all the problems I talked about earlier. And, uh, and until we can get some changes at the state level and get some improvements made where we can attract good quality uh, people and, and just get more people into the law enforcement profession, we're going to continue to have these problems. And unfortunately, I think we're going to continue to see rises in crime, including violent crime in our communities, which is totally unacceptable. I think for myself and for all the folks I talk to, there's nothing more important than being able to feel safe in your home and in your neighborhood and in your community. And so if I have a call to action to you today, it's to please encourage uh, your elected officials and all others to take serious action on this issue so that we can get this turned around and ensure that our communities are safe. Because I don't want to end on a negative note, we've got one more slide here to talk about uh, one of the things I've been really passionate about uh, over the last couple of years. I've had the opportunity to go to different classrooms throughout Snohomish County with Councilmember Mead. So I'm a Republican, Councilmember Mead is a Democrat. But one of the things we share in common is, uh, well, we're both relatively young and, and we both try as hard as we can to work across the aisle. Even when there's disagreement, we try to find commonalities and, and work together to find uh, solutions. That, and I think our community expects that. You know, we've got some, um, maybe some, some bad examples at higher levels of government where people are unwilling to work together. But when I go out and talk to the public, by and large, people want to see uh, collaboration. They want to see people working together to get the job done. And you know, most of the issues we face, I'd say 99% of the issues aren't partisan issues, right? Uh, someone once told me that potholes don't have parties. When we're talking about parks and jobs and safety, these things shouldn't be partisan. We should be able to work together. And so it's been a great experience. We've had the opportunity to be invited to different high school classrooms throughout Snohomish County and getting to talk to kids about the importance of civil discourse, being respectful, especially with those that we disagree with, and trying to find commonalities to work together toward common goals. And so this has, I think, been uh, probably the favorite part of my job for the past couple of years has been going and getting to talk with kids about this. And, and, uh, and they're very receptive to it. I think this is something that kids want to see. And I think we need some more examples for, uh, and role models for kids to look up to in, in this area. And so uh, that's been fun for me to get to do. 
Well, I've thrown a lot of information at you this morning. I appreciate you being willing to uh, take time out of your morning to come and, and listen today and your attentiveness, and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have any, if we have time. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this one. Thank you, Nate. Um, my question is uh, regarding the increased death rate from 18-year-olds to 34-year-olds regarding overdose deaths of fentanyl. Uh, has uh, Snohomish County and its leadership been able to address this concern uh, immediately and ongoing into the future? Great question, Todd. Thanks for bringing that up. So fentanyl has been a, a huge growing issue. Before we were seeing uh, heroin and, and, and uh, synthetic opioids being a problem, but fentanyl has been a, on the rise, and heroin and meth and others are, uh, have not been quite as prevalent. Um, so the issue with fentanyl is it's much more potent, right? It's, uh, I think it's been called an elephant tranquilizer before, and so it's been causing a lot of death, uh, a lot more death than heroin or others would. And uh, a lot of it's coming over from China and other areas, so it's very difficult to, to get a handle on. I know we've had some recent arrests made where they've gotten just tons of these fentanyl pills. Um, and, you know, how, how are we addressing it? I think, you know, our public safety team, our sheriff's office and other municipal public safety agencies are doing a really good job of trying to get after the distributors of this in our communities. Um, but the difficulty is I think it's an international issue, right, where a lot of this is coming from overseas, and how do we stop that? From coming into our communities and how do we educate um, folks you know you mentioned the stat about young people that this is deadly and it's you know several times more deadly than other drugs and so how do we get that out there the, the true danger of these pills um, so there's a lot of work to be done there for sure all right you guys are gonna let me off easy oh, okay one more With the um, strawberry fields on that road, you know, there's a lot of construction going on. Is there any possibility the road will be widened and maybe a third lane put in? That's a good question. That's not a part of this specific project. It's just the recreational aspect of the field. Um, but that's something that we could look at, whether that, that road needs to be looked at or not. So that's a good suggestion. Thank you. like no other questions. Well, thank you again for your time. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and share about Snohomish County, and please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns at any time. Thank you. All right, can we give Nate another big round of applause? Um, now I'd like to bring our MC up uh, to the stage with me, uh, Todd Fallman. We are going to actually do um, a quick presentation to our Silver Club members. Our Silver Club is any chamber member that has been with us for over 25 plus years. So um, as you see, we have these beautiful awards up here, and we just want to acknowledge them and thank them for their continued partnership, for their belief in the chamber, and just for staying a member with us. Um, so I will, um, uh, sorry, hold on just a second. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna, as I name your, or as I say your name, please come up to the stage um, and then stand to my right and then we will do a group photo at the very end. So um, since 1989, we have some of the, I should say some of the individuals that cannot be here today, but we are gonna list everybody off, so. Um, 1989, we had Saffron, Ca Saffron Cabin that joined us. 1991, we had Grandview Village, Village Concepts of Marysville, and Abby and Joanne, if you can please join me on the stage. 1991, we also had Schaefer Shipman Funeral Home join us. Sonny Trail Pacific also joined us in 1991. And then e, e Lumber also joined us. And Britt Adamson, if you can join us on the stage, please. And then um, 1992, we had a couple individuals or members that joined us. We had um, Lauren Van Lu with Edward Jones and um, Marysville School District of Katie Jackson and Jody Runyon can join us on the stage. Come on up, guys. 
And then 1993, we have um, City of Marysville. If Mayor Nearing can join us on the stage. Um, Tulalip Resort Casino, if Tracy Goldsby can join us on the stage. And Tulalip Tribes, if Mel Sheldon can join us on the stage. And then in 1994, we had uh, Snohomish County. Nate Nearing, if you can join us on the stage. Marysville Fire District, Chief Martin McFalls, if you can join us on the stage. And then in 19, a couple more years, guys, 1995, we had Pacific Copy and Printing. 1996, we have Columbia College, and that is uh, Dr. Darren Hand, if you can join us on the stage. And last but not least, um, 1997, we had Wagner Jewelers join us. So can we give them all a round of applause? Snohomish County and Marysville Fire. Any more up here? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, can we give our Silver Club members a big, big, big round of applause? And now Todd will take over the show. Well, don't say that. How's everybody doing today? It's Friday. Come on. It's Friday. It's great to see everybody out here today. Uh, wow, Nate. You know what? What a great um, what a great presentation. It's so it's so wonderful to hear the collaboration and with the Swiss and all the different counties coming together, and. Uh, working on that on you know together in the mental health and transportation you know if you just take care of the transportation there wouldn't be any need for all that mental health behavior stuff you know <laughs> other no seriously there's some really great stuff for our parks uh the youth and you know in addition to everything that's going on here and thank you for your leadership and for those uh, on the other side that you collaborate with, uh, both coming together and uh, making our lives much easier and possible to um, uh, live and do what we do best here and serve our community. And Rick, thank you so much for that inspiration. Wow, you know, it makes me want to go and do more too, so I appreciate that. Uh, we, here we are in the next part of this presentation here, and we've gotten here today to also do some networking, right? Yes? Okay. <laughs> well, we're going to do some table networking, and now is the uh, time to do so. We're going to take some time. Uh, each buddy, everybody at their table is going to take some time to get to know one another, introduce one another, and uh, share with you what your best business practices are. And we're going to give uh, everybody about 60 seconds, and I have a little timer up here. And when you hear the bell, we'll go around the table, and we'll be the next person to get involved. All right? Let's go ahead and do that. Thanks. Okay, thank you. We're going to get moving on with the program. Uh, we have, uh, in the rest of our program, we have introduction to new members, showcase tables, roving mic, and some raffle prizes. And as we begin to transition into introduction of new members, I'd like to give a quick shout out to, uh, for those that make this possible. And it could, it, there's a lot of work that goes into putting an event like this together. So, Anne, are you here? Anne? And can, we, can you come over here for a second? To, 
Does everyone know Anne? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's all say thank you, Anne, at once. One, two, three. Isn't she wonderful? Yes, she is. Thank you, Anne, so much. And again, Dave, thank you, Dave Watson, for uh, helping us all become better members. And Yvonne, thank you for your leadership. And it is wonderful to uh, work with you on the board. And as um, chairman of the membership committee, uh, you make it very pleasant to be a part of this uh, chamber as well. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, again, uh, now we're going to be moving on to the new members. I'm going to list down the new members, and if you hear your name uh, uh, announced, please come forward. We'll have one minute. I have my little egg timer. Before I had the five-minute egg timer, and somebody from the audience is like, that's a long one minute. And I looked down, and it was like a five-minute timer. I'm like, wow. Thanks, Kim. Um, <laughs> you got it. So we're going to, uh, I'm going to announce the new members, and if you hear your name announced, please come up. You'll have, uh, after the announcements are made, you'll have one minute to introduce yourself uh, to the chamber, because we love introducing and getting to know new members. So here we go. Uh, Jermaine Hargrove. Yes. American Cancer Society. FDG, Web Design and Development. Caliber Home Loans. Carl Rose, Carl, Ro Carl Rose Insurance, St. Joseph's House, Cemeteria Integrative Medical, 2020 Chip Repair, Survey Wildlife Care Center, Largo Tents, Keep Dreams Alive Foundation, Marysville Community Food Bank, Pendleton. Please make your way forward to the microphone. You'll have one minute to introduce yourself. Good morning, my name is Jermaine Hargrove. I am a dual licensed real estate agent and mortgage loan officer. I service Nahomish, King, and Skagit County. I can do everything from home equity line of credits, traditional mortgages, refinances, and of course help you buy or sell a home here in the area. I know with the market changing, a lot of people are concerned with what's gonna happen, and I usually take just a common sense approach working with your budget and your needs. And then every Monday, I also have a uh, coffee networking group in downtown Everett at a quarterly changing uh, coffee shop right now. It is at Cafe Macario, and uh, if you want my business card, you can click on the networking group and uh, meet with me casually every Monday morning at 8.15. Everybody loves coffee, Jermaine. Give it up to Jermaine. Fantastic. Here's a microphone. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Tom Granger. I am the CEO of FDG Web. We are a custom web development and design firm that's been in business for 21 years now. And we just slowly moved up the uh, I-5 quarter from Bellevue. Um, as we saw our employee mix change, uh, we like Snohomish County because of the quality of life for our employees. Um, we basically do projects big and small. And that ranges from small business all the way to, we've had clients on Shark Tank. We do Washington State Legislature special projects. Um, if you can think it, we can build it. And people get into relationships with us because they want to pick up the phone and talk to the same people year after year. Uh, we have all local employees, so that's designers, developers, marketers, uh, for all your digital needs. And we don't do any outsourcing at all. So if you've got a question, just come find me. Thanks. Awesome, Tom. Thank you, and welcome to the chamber. Next, please. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt. Uh, I am with Cal Rose Insurance. What Cal Rose is, is we are an independent insurance agency located in Everett, Washington. Uh, a little bit about us. Uh, I'm actually a fourth generation insurance agent, and my father, who is the principal of the agency, has, ran, has been in insurance for 35 years. What we do is we help people make good decisions when it comes to insurance. Insurance is very complex, and we do a lot of commercial and personal. And so what we do is we take the complication out of it. Give you the information that you need so that way you can make a good decision for yourself. As I said, we do personal and commercial insurance. We're not afraid of anything that is complex. And uh, if you would like to come say hi, like I said, we are in uh, downtown Everett. And uh, yeah, so thanks for having me. Matt, you make insurance easy, plus you make it look good. Next, please. 
Hi, everybody. My name is Curtis Mattingly, and I'm the owner of 2020 Chip Repair. We all, know, we all know cracks are whack, right? So when you get that little chip in your vehicle, give us a call immediately. Don't wait till it spreads, until it's too late, because once you have to do that, you have to replace your windshield, you compromise your seal on the original integrity of the windshield, it can open up a whole nother can of worms. We have easy booking online at 2020.glass, and it's free with most insurance. We also offer what's called a concierge fleet service, where we have several, like the city of Snohomish is one of our clients, and monthly we do walkthroughs on all their vehicles, check for any chips that have been missed by any of their employees and make sure they're fixed. And in, in doing that, we save this, the companies thousands of dollars in windshield replacements every year. Also, uh, I'm a big social media cross promoter, so if anybody would like to like 2020 Chip Repair, I'll like you back, and we can help each other grow. So with that being said, when all is said and done, I'll have you saying, chip, chip away. Oh, I love it, man. I was going to put the boom, 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 boom. He's got a good one. That, you practiced that, rehearsed it. It was really, really, I want a sweatshirt. <laughs> I like you. Next, please. I'm the short one. I thought I was ready, but I feel like I click delete once I step in the stage. So give me a minute. <laughs> More than one minute. Uh, my name is Christina. A place to gather. Um, from a wedding to any type of event to a, a patio privacy enclosure to we work with uh, the rental companies that are locally and family on in the state. And we are Largo Tents. We are uh, here in Marysville. My husband has uh, more than 20 years experience in the manufacturing side. And not to mention that um, the tent industry helped the world thrive through the pandemic. So <laughs> we make and manufacture tents. Oh, where are your service? Thank you. <laughs> you can say that's a real intense business. Hey, that's awesome. That's great. Let's get to know her some more. Thank you. For, you did great, by the way. Didn't you do awesome? Yeah, I know. Next. Well, good morning. I'm Jim Bedoin. I'm the new executive director for the Marysville Community Food Bank. And I'll have to say Yvonne was on the phone to me, meeting with me the first day I was in town um, to do that. But mostly because she was a volunteer at the, at the food bank. And it was amazing to see all the pictures that folks were showing up of things and how many folks volunteer at the food bank that are here in the room today. So thank you very much for that. We appreciate that. We've been around for almost 50 years. Um, so we're excited about the things that we do to help the community and we're excited that we're um, so supported by you in the community. There's a little stat card and everything sitting out on the table over here if you want to pick one up going out. Um, but uh, just so you know that in 2021, we served um, almost 13,000 households uh, with 1,300,000 pounds of food. And that uh, translated to about 39,000 individuals. So we really appreciate that uh, you support us so that we can support those in need in the community. And I look forward to working with all of you and the different kinds of events and things that we can do together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Really, really appreciate the service, what you do for our community as well. Again, if, if you are here and you have that, the Silver Club, can I, uh, can I see your hands or hold up your trophies if you're in the Silver Club 25 years or more? Come on. Let's see it. Let's see it. Come on. Yes. That's wonderful. That's great. Let's give them another round. Okay. They've been members almost as long as I've been alive. Sure. Okay, I'm the silver club. It's just around the edges. <laughs> okay. So uh, every, uh, every, every uh, meeting for the business before hours, there are showcase tables over here uh, to my left. If you're looking at them, great. If you're behind them. We want to make sure that uh, we give a special shout out for those showcase tables. So if you've had a showcase table, uh, please come up and uh, we'll give one more minute. For those that have a showcase table, uh, announce what it is you have and a little bit about what you do. Uh, so uh, today, it, hey, it's today's sponsor. 
Okay, has a showcase table. McCarthy General Contractor. Let's bring, come here. Come on. Sherwood Community Services, U.S. Bank Village Community Services. Come up to the stage, please. We didn't talk about this. We're talking about it now. Not really sure what I'm supposed to say up here. Well, yeah, it's the empty one. I, I, I came. For, look, I came for the bacon. All right, that's why I came here. That's it. You have a showcase table. So enjoy your bacon, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Hello everyone, I am Tiffany Fritchman and I am here representing U.S. Bank. Um, I am actually what's called a goals coach, which is a fairly new position for the bank. What I focus on is I'm trained in behavioral science, where I help customers, personal and small businesses, about um, creating change and goals in their life. Uh, we focus on habit changes, behavioral changes, as well as um, I'm a helpful accountability partner. So um, it's been really fun. Some of the goals that we are hearing and seeing are uh, personal branding. We have folks um, trying to think about how they're going to purchase that new home in this crazy real estate market. And of course, we're helping small businesses get started and pursue that passion. So um, another thing that we've been doing is starting to partner with businesses and organizations and teaching workshops. Um, we did one recently for um, the Society of Human Resource Managers around work-life balance. That group is getting hit pretty hard right now with the pandemic and um, helping their employees of each business. So um, I have a flyer if any of you want to hear a little bit more about goals coaching and how I might be able to help you. Um, would love to talk you, to you about that a little bit further. So thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. The next showcase table, please. Hi, my name is Eileen Levering. I'm with Sherwood Community Services. And for those of you who don't know, Sherwood Community Services advocates and supports adults and children with disabilities. And we are always looking for employers who are looking to diversify their workforce. So if you are a business owner and want to help somebody get a job and be a productive person in society, please reach out to us. We have a couple of events coming up. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one is this weekend at Holland Happenings in Oak Harbor. And then we also have, um, on May 22nd, we have the Teddy Bear Picnic at the Link Northwest. And then for those of you who like beer, we have a fundraiser at Scuttlebutt's on the 27th. So all you have to do is come, order a beer, and then they will tie the portion of the proceeds to Sherwood. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, please, if you could come to the mic. Hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Sid, um, and I am the volunteer coordinator at Village Community Services. I work with Rhonda. Um, yeah, and Village Community Services, we're based near, or near Arlington at Smoky Point, and we provide employment, residential, and vocational services to adults in the intellectually and developmentally disabled community. Um, so yeah, and we're, my job, I mean, we're looking for volunteers. I know we had a presentation to start us off this morning about community service. Um, so if you're really feeling in that energy, please um, talk to me about ways you can volunteer with us. Um, yeah, we have our uh, annual gala coming up in June. Um, June 11th, June 11th, and we have sponsorship forms um, if you're feeling generous. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm missing anything else. Yeah, so thank you for letting us come up here, and good morning. Thank you again for the showcase tables, and please make some time to visit them on your way out. Uh, and introduce yourself to these wonderful, wonderful people who uh, participated in the showcase tables. Uh, before we transition into the roving mic section, I want to give a quick second and thank you to, uh, to Lalip and for those that have served us here today and provided this wonderful breakfast. We had bacon. Okay, some of us get excited about that. Next time, ice cream.
with the bacon, maybe? Maple bars and bacon go good. Okay, for members only, we're moving on now to the roving mic. Uh, uh, this is for members only. Uh, any chamber member who uses roving mic time to do a kudo or a testimony to another chamber member company will get to put an additional card for the raffle prize drawing. Yes, that's good, isn't it? So if you're a chamber member and you have a special shout out you'd like to give to another company here at the chamber, please uh, come forward. I'll be moving my way down here to the floor. Roving Mike, I'm roving with the mic. You rove to the you you rove to the front with me. Here. I want you to stand right here on the dot so you look right into the camera. Perfect. Hi, everybody. So I want to give a shout out to Jermaine and to Kevin Kevin Daniels. Um, they are amazing. They helped my daughter buy a condo. So my daughter and her fiance just moved into their condo in Mount Vernon, and it was quite the journey. Um, they started with them, did a home buyer's class, and uh, it got a little tricky in the middle, but everything worked out. And we were so excited, and they are very happy to be homeowners. My daughter is graduating from college and getting married this year, so they're young and responsible kids, and they're now homeowners, so it's super exciting. So thank you, guys. Fantastic. Thanks. Thank you so much. And there's the basket. Hi, Joanne Acton from Village Concepts of Marysville, Grandview Village. I wanted to give a shout out to several of our uh, community members. So first, Nathan from Pure Clean. In the height of the restrictions, uh, start of COVID, he came to our facility dressed up as the Easter Bunny, went around the whole building with inspirational messages for all of our residents, so thank you to him. Um, also, Nancy Denny of Motto Mortgage, we just did a very successful shred event together, so thank you for that. And then looking forward to uh, May 20th, we will be having a Spring Health Fair outdoor event at Grandview Village, and I know Coastal Community Bank, and some other folks will be joining us as well. So thank you to all of the community members. Thank you, thank you. Roving Mike, Roving Mike. Yes. Hi, I'm Emily Vanderbilen. I am the project manager for a brand new uh, Salacia seafood, value added seafood product. We are under construction right now. I can't say enough of thank yous to the city of Marysville and their entire team for helping us get from the zero ground to where we have a shell of a building now. And they've been working very closely with us, and I had to say thank you very much. You guys have been a huge support. You can put, you can put a business card into the basket. If you don't have one, you can put one of mine. <laughs> No, that's not right. Um, so I'd like to give a shout out to uh, a business here as a chamber member. This is Real Property Management, North Puget Sound. Uh, Frank, Danny, John, Gail, and the others, they're at the team. They do an outstanding job in protecting your investments with property management. I feel so secure and so safe recommending them to any property owner or investor who wants to have somebody placed in a rental property. I believe there's nobody better than real property management, North Puget Sound, that can handle that business. So thank you, Frank, and the team at, at that company. They're great, and they're moving, and they're moving into Marysville. Uh, I believe they're taking occupancy next week. That's right. One more. You got Uh, thank you. So wonderful and take advantage of this to uh, thank the city of Marysville and Mayor Neary for proclaiming uh, May 14th the Letter Carriers Food Drive Day. So we're going to be doing that. And that is uh, the first time in the last two years that we're actually going to be able to be doing this food drive with the letter carriers. So any of you that are interested in seeing how that works, maybe participating, being a driver to help follow behind them and pick up all the food that's going to be left out by the citizens of Marysville and Snohomish County, uh, please do. And I also want to put a shout out to Coastal uh, Community Bank for being so welcoming and coming and helping us evaluate our business needs and everything and doing some really good work for us. So thank you. Terrific. Go ahead and place another. Uh, any more? Any more? Any more? Any more? I'd like to give a shout out to Todd Fallman and the Realty One Group Orca. They helped me sell my house for way above asking. And then they helped me get into another house as part of the, the whole transaction that was an off-market deal. And now we're 
not only moving our office to Marysville, moving in next week, but we moved in to Marysville in the sunny crest or sunny side neighborhood uh, about a month ago. So we're all in Marysville. So and thank you, Todd, and and the whole team there. Okay, there's a lot of love. There's a lot of love. Let's get going on because we got to some business to do later on today. All right. Next on the agenda, it says everyone go home and uh, live in peace. I'm joking. Well, yeah, later. That's good. But right now, who feels like winning? That? There's a few people over there. How about anyone over here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, so if you don't have your business card, it's too late to put it in there because you missed it. All right. So uh, if you have a raffle prize to give away, please come forward. We're going to uh, do some drawings up here. So if you have a raffle prize, please come over here and line up against the wall over here to my right. If you have a raffle prize, please come forward. Plum forward now. We want to be out of here in a, a, a respectable amount of time for everybody. Thank you. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Good. Well, introduce yourself. I, should I pull it? Uh, Ryan Brown, Link Northwest. Want to take an opportunity to invite everybody to our Teddy Bear Picnic event, which is May 21st in the afternoon. Uh, excited to have lots of community partners there. It's a literacy-focused event. We'll have local authors, Snow Isle Libraries doing a presentation. And today I'm giving away a center coffee cup full of chocolate to Jody Runyon, Marysville School District. Come on up. Thank you so much. Next, please. That'll hold a lot of coffee, Jody. Hello there, everyone. My name is Raj Mehta. I'm the general manager of uh, Glen Car Wash on um, 116th. We're the new Express Exterior Car Wash. Um, I just have a few uh, free car wash gift cards for, um, for anyone that wants them. So please come by and grab them whenever you... <laughs> <Anyone>? Todd's got them, so... <laughs> but no, please, um, we have a lot, and uh, if you guys would want, we'll be at the table over there. I'll just be distributing these. Thank you guys for all the support. Let's, let's, oh, let's put them right over here. Let's, let's pick one. Oh, pick one? Okay. Let's give the first one away. We're going to give it to uh, Frank Volk, Volker. Volker. Right Volker. Yes, sir. morning. Um, sun tea kit. I do have to admit, though, that due to supply chain issues, I was unable to find lemon juice. So there's lemon heads in there. <laughs> so Steve Longshore. Steve. That looks like a great gift. Well, look inside. No, I don't want to unwrap it. Good morning, everybody. Again, I'm Rhonda Snyder. I'm a business banker with Coastal Community Bank. I serve businesses in Snohomish County and King County to help you have a better relationship with your bank. Not only do I help you with your banking needs, but you also get my cell phone number, so you can call or text me whenever you need help. I'm available. So this lovely gift, which I can't remember what it is because I packed it a while ago, is for Tiffany with U.S. Bank. The mystery prize. Love it. Looks like we have one more raffle. Two more? We have two more? Two more raffles. We have five more raffles. Okay, right, next, please. I've only got one. Just, just one for me. Um, so I've heard that some of you have tried our bacon. I'm with uh, Talayla up here, Tracy. Um, oh, yes, we love you. Aside from the bacon, has anybody ever been to any of our restaurants here? I figured. Um, today I have a gift certificate for $60 at Journey's East Restaurant. One of my favorites. Joanne Action, Community Realtors. Thank you. Date night! There you go! Fantastic. One more giveaway. Two more! Eight more giveaways! <laughs> okay. Okay, so I have two sets of red curtain shows for Into the Woods. Um, it, you can change your dates on here if you're the winner. So if you can't make it on May 20th, 
Just call the theater and they will change those for you. So we have Sharon Aid and Kevin Daniels. And then um, on behalf of the chamber, we've got um, two free business before hours uh, for the month of May. So that will go to, well, we sure already went. <laughs> it's okay, you'll be fine. For Stefan, and he's not a member, so now he can become a member. No. <laughs> Wonderful. Again, thank you for coming out, and I'd like to turn the rest of the program over to our president of the Marysville Tillillip Chamber of Commerce, Yvonne Sepulveda, everybody. Okay, can we give Todd another round of applause? Isn't he a great MC? All right, so lots of, uh, April was a slow month for the chamber, but we hit May running, so um, the first table up there has all our events coming up for May. Um, May 12th is gonna be our business at lunch at the Opera House, so come join us for that. May 19th, we've uh, partnered with uh, the City of Marysville and Port of Everett to present a business summit at the Opera House. That is limited capacity, so if you have not registered, make sure you do that ASAP. Um, May 20th is the next business before hours. That will be with Ty Reed with Work, Work Force. Um, and we are sold out on showcase tables, so uh, May is sold out for that. Um, May 24th, we've got a Latino networking event um, at Realty One Group Orca with Jose. Um, May 25th is membership orientation. If you do not know how to um, register, if you don't know how to use the website, come to that. It's open for everybody and anybody. And then June 11th is our big uh, major event of the, first major event of the year with partnership with a Strawberry Festival. Our title sponsor is Marysville Toyota and that's um, our um, golf tournament. And we're kicking off a Strawberry Week Festival. So join us for that. We have six whole sponsors still available. If you, wanna, in, or if you are interested in being a whole sponsor, reach out to myself or to Anne. And if you are a golfer, come join us. We have about 20 spots left for teams. Um, so those are all our events. Lots and lots of stuff happening. Um, and then I just want to say a huge thank you to all the people that have put this together. Today's sponsor, Rick McCarthy with McCarthy General Contractor. Thank you, Rick. Um, thank you to our chamber volunteers and emissaries for all their help. Thank you, Nate, for your great presentation. Thank you to Tulip Resort Casino for their great service and delicious breakfast, including the bacon. And a big thanks to you, our members, for your ongoing commitment to this great business community our chamber serves. Um, I will give you back two minutes again. Yay, we're on time. Um, thank you all for coming. Have a great afternoon and a great weekend.